don't need your approval. I just, if I don't want to waste your time. So, um, why don't we just love the Lord? Can we do that? Can we just thank Him for what He's doing and He's saying in our midst? Father, thank You so very much. Thank You so very much. You're so kind to us. You're so good to us. God, we honor You. We love You. We give You praise. We give You praise. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You may be seated. So, uh, the Jews wandered 40 years in the desert out of the will of God. God gave them a king even though it was never his will for anyone to be their king but him. We've proven that to you scripturally, correct? You saw that. Now, go with me to 1 Chronicles chapter 7, 17. 1 Chronicles chapter 17. Let's look at some more scripture here. This class is over at 1 o'clock. Is that what you said? Well... I don't want to wear out the saints the most high. First Chronicles 17. We're going to read quite a few scriptures, so uh, uh, feel free to, to read, along, read along with us. Now it came to pass, I'm at verse 3, 1 Chronicles 17. Now it came to pass, as David sat in his house, that David said to Nathan the prophet, Lo, I dwell in a house of cedars, but the ark of the covenant of the Lord remaineth under curtains then Nathan said unto David do all that is in thine heart for God is with thee who is Nathan Nathan was prophet Nathan was obviously a prophet in David's life now David's king right Na David Nathan was the man that came and put his finger in his face and he said you're the man remember when he rebuked David okay that's that's the that's the role that Nathan had in David's life now Notice this. Nathan said to David, Do all that is in thy heart. What's the next statement? <sighs> Was he? Drop on down to verse 3. And it came to pass the same night that the word of God came to Nathan, saying, Go and tell, my, tell David my servant, Thus saith the Lord, Thou shalt not build me a house to dwell in. I thought he said God said he was with him. Does that mean Nathan was a false prophet? Because he made a mistake? I'm not trying to justify mistakes made. I'm just saying we, we've made some determinations that the book doesn't make. Nathan genuinely thought the Lord was in it. But the Lord came back to him and said, No. Now let's, let's see what the Lord told him. Thou shalt not build a, me a, a house to dwell in, for I have not dwelt in a house since the day that I brought up Israel unto this day, but have gone from tent to tent and from one tabernacle to another. Wheresoever I have walked with all Israel, spake I a word to any of the judges of Israel. Now, that verse, that statement should tell you who was ruling. Okay? God appointed men. Whom I commanded to feed my people, saying, Why have you not built me a house of cedar? That's a question. Okay? God is saying, Look, did I speak a word to anybody and ask them why, I've, why you've not built me a house? Now therefore thou shalt, thus shalt thou say unto my servant David, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, I took thee from the sheep coat, even from following the sheep, that thou shouldest be ruler over my people Israel. And I have been with thee whithersoever thou hast walked, and have cut off all thine enemies from before thee, and
and have made thee a name like the name of the great men that are in the earth. Also, I will ordain a place for my people Israel. Will plant them, and they shall dwell in their place, and shall not be moved, and shall not, and shall be moved no more. Neither shall the children of wickedness waste them any more, as at the beginning. And since the time that I commanded judges to be over my people Israel, moreover I will subdue all thine enemies. Furthermore, I tell thee that the Lord will build thee a house. Now drop on down. And it shall come to pass, watch this now, when thy days be expired, that thou must go to be with thy fathers, that I will raise up thy seed after thee, which shall be of thy sons, and I will establish his kingdom. He shall build me a house, and I will establish his throne. How long? If we read that, we would think he's talking about Solomon. Solomon's kingdom wasn't forever. But again, I want to establish here God's government. Look what he says. Let's read it again. I will establish his throne. What does a throne represent? Who sits on thrones? Kings. Forever. I will be his father. He shall be my son. I will not take my mercy away from him as I took it from him that was before thee. But I will settle him in mine house and in my kingdom, how long? Forever. And his throne shall be established forevermore. His kingdom is going to be an everlasting kingdom. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. And of his government and of his kingdom shall never end. Who is that? The Son. Who was also the Everlasting Father. Amen. The kingdom that God established from Old Testament flows through New Testament. It doesn't end. And that's exactly why when I saw this about a year and a half ago, maybe two years now, when I saw this and I began to realize Jesus constantly talked about the kingdom. Everything was about the kingdom. Seek ye first. And his righteousness and all these other things shall be added to you. It was the kingdom he said to seek. Well, Lord, teach us to pray. Okay, I'll do well. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Except a man is born of water and spirit, he'll not see or enter into the kingdom of God. Well, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? We'll get into that a little bit later, I think. The kingdom of God is not meat or drink, righteousness, peace, joy in the Holy Ghost. Wait a minute. Why didn't he say the church? 